You know, it is surprising with how widespread the iPhone is that there are so few emulators for it. I mean, to be fair, Apple does have a history of suing people who try, but still, given the ubiquity of them, I'm surprised I haven't seen more attempts. Which is why I was very interested to discover a developer by the name of Martin DeVos had been working on an iPod Touch emulator based on QMU's existing ARM emulation. This is a very similar approach to the Xbox emulator ZMU and its close ancestor XQMU, both of which, as the name suggests, are based on QMU's x86 emulation. The fact that this emulated a second gen iPod Touch particularly interested me because I had one of those back in 2008, and I got a lot of mileage out of that thing before I was allowed to have you know, a real smartphone. So not only was I excited for the prospects of hardware preservation, I was also excited to relive a little bit of my childhood. I should mention this is very much still a work in progress. In fact, much of the hardware you'd expect on an iPod Touch has not yet been fully implemented, including the Wi-Fi, the USB, and the sound. Now you might think an iPod Touch with no USB or Wi-Fi is not particularly useful, and you'd be right, they're very much devices designed for consuming content, but like I said, this is a work in progress. It's much more exciting for what it will be than what it is today. That being said, what is here is still very impressive. I mean, it's an iPod Touch, and you can re-experience a lot of what it was like to use one. It's a little slower than an iPod Touch, probably from the ARM CPU emulation, though possibly also because of the lack of graphics acceleration. I don't know if the iPod Touch had any. I was also able to make it crash a few times, but no more than something I'd expect from something that's still in alpha. So yeah, it's pretty cool, and we can only expect things to get better. Martin has already had some success towards getting the Wi-Fi working, which will obviously make this more useful, and working out the older hardware will probably be a lot simpler and help a lot in figuring out the newer, more complex hardware in the future. Now, how can you try this out right now? Well, currently it's a little complicated. You'll have to compile it from scratch, which is easier on some platforms than others. Build instructions are provided for macOS and Windows, but I found with a few tweaks I was able to get it to build for Linux too, which is what you're seeing here. I did also try building for Windows, but unfortunately I couldn't actually get it to run. That might just be me though, and either way I'm sure Windows binaries will become available as this continues to develop. After it's compiled, the GitHub repository provides all of the boot files you'll need and the instructions on how to run it. And there's nothing else to it. It really is that easy, provided you have some command line experience. So I just thought I'd shine a light on this very interesting project. I spoke to Martin and asked if there was anything in particular he wanted me to shout out, and he said he'd really appreciate contributions. So if you have any knowledge in this area, consider heading over to the GitHub and seeing what you can do to help. I'll leave a link in the description. Let me know if you like this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.